Hello, and welcome to Dear Franny, the podcast where I have uncommon conversations about love with fascinating people. I'm your host, Francesca Hoagie. This is episode number one, and I could not be more thrilled to share it with you. Today's guest is Tunde Adebembe. Tunde is best known as the lead singer of one of my all-time favorite bands, TV on the Radio. He's also an actor and a writer and a director and an animator and a visual artist. Like, he's so insanely talented. It's kind of crazy. And he is a dream guest of mine. And I frankly still can't believe he said yes to being on the show, but I'm so glad that he did. My conversation with Tunde spans a lot of topics love songs, creativity, heartbreak, marriage, perspective, and more. I'm so excited for you to hear it. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Tunde Adebempe. And when I first came up with the concept of this podcast and I created my list of dream guests, Mm -hmm. you were on it. Oh, great. Thank you. (laughs) And I thought maybe one day I'll be able to get him to come on my podcast. And here we are. And it was, I I am just so happy to have you here. Welcome to the podcast, Tunde Adebempe, probably best known as the lead singer of TV on the radio, Mm -hmm. which is one of my all-time favorite bands. Oh, Rev, thank you. <laughs> I'm such a huge fan, always listening. Oh, man. <laughs> and you're also an actor mm-hmm. and a director and a visual artist, Yeah. And uh, which is where I met you at your solo show. Oh, yeah, my show, yeah. Downtown LA here. Mm-hmm. And now you are sitting in my little kitchen. In your awesome kitchen. And... <laughs> in your awesome bungalow. Oh, thank and you. I was just telling you beforehand, it's incredibly peaceful here, and I'm very jealous oh. of this spot. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can come over anytime you want <laughs> yeah don't, i'll be like sleeping in your backyard like, franny get out of your house <laughs> i need some time i need some time i gotta think i gotta think one thought <laughs> give me some time you know there's so many questions that i have for you mm-hmm. but i guess i should sort of just explain a little bit about why specifically i wanted to talk to you about mm-hmm. love i'm a dating expert yep. as they say mm-hmm. and when you're in this world of you know always talking about relationships and dating and i'm coaching people all the time it becomes like an echo chamber of so-called love experts okay i think that what's happening societally you know in terms of just connection and people feeling really disconnected and beyond dating being hard which it is modern dating is really hard. Beyond that, I want to talk to people who are not living in this world. I want to talk to people yeah. who are like interesting and smart and creative and you were like the epitome of that. Oh, <laughs> if you wrote a dating advice book, like I would read it. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> there would definitely be, if I went into my own dating history, there would be, yeah, it would just be fail, fail, fail. All right, this is working out. Fail, <laughs> fail, fail, fail. I thought that was working out. Now it's a fail. Yeah. And then every once in a while, you're just like, I was not looking for this at all. I was not expecting it. And here it is. And it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you been married? It's going to be, it's going to be 10 years in December. Oh, amazing. Which God. the cool part about it is it doesn't really feel like 10 years, mm-hmm. which I kind of personally, like I never really, it wasn't on my mind in a very active way that I would be married someday. Certainly not for like as long as as we've been married but it's cool never you know i think it's mainly because i don't know my whole thing past you can get infatuated with someone you can fill your mind with an idea of like what something's supposed to be but ultimately after going through a bunch of stuff i realized it's like if you find someone that you like being nice to (laughs) (laughs) that you like then we're just kind of like i don't know i just want to be really i want to help you out you know because you help me out we're nice to each other Mm -hmm. you know and it doesn't it's huge it's kind of It really is. It's huge. Yeah. But then you just, despite whatever ups and downs you have, you always come back to a thing of just kind of like, yeah, that's, we're not really here to make each other's lives more fraught with anxiety or, you know, any kind of nervousness or bad feelings. Like we're here to kind of like, there's enough to navigate in this world without the person that you're sharing space with being like a cause of distress. Seriously. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Like on both ends, you know? So it's, yeah, I feel like that's kind of been the... The thing that, not the thing has kept it going, but the thing that I guess makes me, doesn't make me realize that time's passing, you know? Yeah, <laughs> And yeah. it's not like I'm like, oh, the last five years really burnt me out. <laughs> <laughs> I counted every day of how enraged I was in this relationship. <laughs> yeah. that, well, see, there's your dating book right there. The cover just says, be nice. Be nice. Be nice. <laughs> 
find someone that you're nice to yeah, and who's okay. nice to you. I officiated a wedding last year. Mm-hmm. I built my entire, you know, wedding speech around this Carl Reiner quote, which is love is hard, lust is easy, like is most important. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> Totally. I completely agree. Yeah. Because I, so I'm 100%. I think yeah. that's, see, that's why I want you to write a dating book. Okay, I will. <laughs> At least a pamphlet. <laughs> At least a pamphlet. <laughs> the bullet points. Maybe like an Instagram caption. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll yeah. settle for that. So, so you mentioned, you know, kind of the ups and downs of your love life. And it's interesting because you, you have so many songs about love. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I like I said, I'm really like a seriously huge TV on the radio mm-hmm. fan. But when I was thinking, when I was preparing for this interview, when I was like, okay, like what are all my favorite songs? It's like all the love songs, which oh, is yeah. which is a lot. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. <laughs> which is a lot. It's funny. I never. I know. Ne- I think I only started to think about that. I remember our last record when we were doing interviews, people would just kind of straight up be just like, "There's so many love songs on this record. Like, what what's going on?" And I was sort of like, I don't. I don't think of I don't really think about it in terms of love songs. That being said, you know, there are I feel like there are only a few topics that real I mean generally that come up, you know, in songs. Yeah. And love is a huge one. Mm-hmm. Um it's also, you know, that's because when people sing sometimes, you know, you're you're sort of like this is the the a call, you know, to someone or you're serenading someone or something. Mm-hmm. But it was funny because I'd never thought of it in terms of I'm writing a lot of love songs, but I think most of my favorite songwriters are have written a lot of love songs. What are your favorite love songs? Well, I remember actually being uh, in high school, and there's a notebook that I found actually a little while ago where it just has a list of songs I wish I'd written. <laughs> oh, amazing. And one of the first ones, <laughs> When I Fall in Love by Nat King Cole. Oh, wow. And I just remember hearing it one time and just going, that's just really so simple and no frills and just the first time like when i fall in love it'll be forever yeah. it'll be forever when i fall in love you know it's just these like mirrored verses mm-hmm. it's just you know that for me is one of the best ones i think to so love me or leave me by nina simone mm-hmm. um is great she could sing uh, a love song she can really sing a love song <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> suzanne by leonard cohen nina simone also did a great cover of that they're just they're just i know so there's many. so many there's so many yeah. it is like the number one thing that people sing it is about. Yeah. that's why i never thought of it in terms of love songs i just thought of like oh these are songs that's what you i forget who the poet was along uh who was it forget who it was but someone you know said something like love will make even a dog bark and rhyme Ooh. you know which is pretty much <laughs> just like yeah if you're in love suddenly these songs come pouring out of you yeah or if you're not in love and wish you were in love songs come pouring out mm-hmm. of you if mm-hmm. you were in love and it busted up somehow yeah songs come pouring out of yeah. you you know i love like thinking about love songs as like all these different sub genres you know mm-hmm. there's like the serenading love song you know you're telling your person how much you love them there's the mournful heartbreak love mm-hmm. song there's the fuck you love song mm-hmm. <laughs> you Absolutely. know heartbreak song yeah, totally. you know there's the lust song there's Absolutely. like so many and there's even the erica badu's next lifetime like mm-hmm. i love that song because i like concept of it it's like oh yeah sometimes that's just what happens mm-hmm. you have a connection with somebody but it's you know next lifetime we're gonna it's do this the thing you know yeah. and i'm like it's i just happening now yeah, yeah it's, and i just i love that and i guess for you as as a songwriter do you find that like when you look back now and realize like oh i've written so many love songs do you feel those themes have changed and evolved with you or can you always kind of tap into sort of every part oh, and every of that? song or every uh just the feelings behind yeah, the like, songs. Like as you like have the has it, you know, maybe when you started writing songs and you were in a more a tumultuous place mm-hmm. in your personal love life. Yeah. You know, have your songs followed the trajectory of your own love life? They I feel like they did more when I was starting to write songs. But you know, you get to a point where you're you can I feel like with any kind of art or writing or autobiographical thing, you know, maybe you're for certain songs I definitely know that I wrote them so I could get this feeling out of my head instead of, you know, being a constant loop in yeah. my head. Just write it down and, you know, then... And that helps. That works. Oh, it's very therapeutic. Much helps. It works, you know, just like if you write every day, just like free writing, you know, mm-hmm. you just get all of whatever that anxiety or, you know, when you're in it and obsessed, like I definitely wrote a lot of songs to get negative or even, you know, feelings of 
longing just away from me so to kind of put them in a place where you're you know it gets overwhelming to feel and also I remember after a certain point I wrote a few songs because I realized that everyone I was telling about this breakup was so sick of hearing about it, you know, and it was just kind of, and I realized, you know, like a friend of mine was just like, no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. It's like, I can't, like, <laughs> like, I understand where you're coming from. But no more. But it's just like, it's, this is really not who I want to hang out with. It's not who I started <laughs> hanging out with. You're sad all the time about someone that like legit, you shouldn't be that sad about because it wasn't like yeah. you, you felt more than they did. So mm-hmm. just lay it to rest. And I was kind of like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should. <sighs> That's right. I can put this somewhere else and not start freaking everyone else out. Yeah. Because also when you're younger too, I feel like, I mean, you can do it at any age, but I feel like I, especially when I was younger, if something bad had happened in a relationship, it's something, if I was on a date or there was someone I potentially liked, the first thing I thought was like, well, if I like this person, I've got to be as open as possible. Mm. And I would start talking about the last relationship that had failed. <laughs> and like after four or five times, I was like, I probably shouldn't lead with that. Probably not. No. <laughs> Definitely, definitely not. Because I just, you just see the face fall where you're just like, and I remember someone who's now a very, very good friend of mine. One of the first times we started talking, you know, like I had a little crush on her, and I was just like, everything, and she was just like, and a few years later, she, she said, yeah, and we were just talking about something else, and um, I was saying just like, yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm just maybe too open with people immediately, and she said, yeah, I remember the first time we started talking, it was really endearing. But definitely I stopped every four minutes and was like, why is he telling me all of this? <laughs> <laughs> why is he telling oh me God. all of this? Let's and see. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's apt. And thank you for being my friend, for kind of sitting with me through that and not just disappearing. Yeah. See, more lessons for your dating book. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be nice and shut up. Yeah. I definitely, I've been on, I remember, I've been on two first and only dates with guys who wound up telling me something really emotional to the point where they cried. Wow. And I was, the first time it happened, I was like sitting there like, oh my God, he's crying. I feel like I can't believe this is happening. And then the second time it happened, I was like, is it me? Like, yeah, wow, exactly. How is what this, is what's making you? How yeah. has this happened to me yeah. twice? Like you'd be a great interrogator. Or no, it's just sit like, down start, like yeah. you know, talking about like family and and then it's no. like a sad story and then you know anyway it's just that's hard though <laughs> i mean it really and it is i think it's a it's not a terrible thing but it's kind of a it's really not being considerate of another person i feel like if you're in a place where you're going to open up and just start bawling about you know and also you can't control that stuff so yeah, i'm not saying yeah. you should control that stuff mm-hmm. but it's really you're not thinking about this while it happens but it's kind of inconsiderate and a little selfish yeah. <laughs> because it's yeah. almost like you're expecting that person to console you or mm-hmm. take care of you mm-hmm. in some way consciously or unconsciously and that's no good for a first date like it's, that's you yeah know, it's not it's sort of that whole <laughs> believe people the first time they tell you who they are yeah you know yeah, exactly where you're just kind of like oh man i need to fix you like immediately should be like do i have the time or desire <laughs> to embark on something with a total stranger yeah. who has just shown me that like they yeah. kind of need a, a they need a, a rock a, they, they need, need some, a rock they need, yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean and it can go a million ways maybe that other, other person is in the right place it can even out to where you know two people who kind of have something they need fulfilled in each other that yeah. can happen yeah but just generally it's a lot I've also, yeah, and I've been on dates too where someone was just, you know, where I just kind of had to be like, I think you need a friend. <laughs> you know, I can probably be that friend. I was like, like, we can't. Yeah, we can't do this. We can't date because is... like, you're a mess right now, but it's, it's crazy in here. Like, can't even, like, <laughs> like, we shouldn't, those wires should not connect. Oh we my both goodness. need to move forward in our lives. Right, right, and not yeah. Backwards, yeah. And you do always need that balance, but yeah, when it's like, it's, you need someone got to be the one who can really hold it down. But yeah. When, but with day one, when you're like, oh, I really am going to have to be a boulder for this person. It's just, it's just too much. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to be a boulder for yourself. You yeah, know? yeah. You can't really just make that room all the time. Mm-hmm. So for you, because you do, you create so many different types of art, you are mm-hmm. such a creative person. Obviously, the, you know, you write a lot of love songs. <laughs> mm-hmm. But do you find that love is a theme that's coming up in other parts of your your creative work? Or is it, and if not, like, what is it about songs and music that is so conducive to love? Well, first off, yes, definitely. Other sort of work, absolutely. I feel like it's all guided by a certain kind of love. I love 
making art generally because it's a way to connect with people in a lot of ways not have to be there when you're connecting with people <laughs> just kind of hear about it eventually like you know it's like the whole message in a bottle thing you just mm-hmm. put stuff out and whoever comes back you know like yeah it's very lovely to meet you and yes. to like be you know in touch and yeah that's a something i couldn't have imagined mm-hmm. you know and like one of my favorite parts about making music it just goes anywhere it's funny to me too because i feel like the band started at a time when it wasn't so easy for an artist to curate their audience Mm -hmm. you know where it was still that whole thing of when we started i would still go to a record store and ask the person working there like what are you listening to and just like take suggestions and go home good old days yeah no i really (laughs) and i do miss that too because now it's kind of well a there's so much more music and so much more access to it but you can also you can target your audience and you can kind of bring people to you who you want to like either a certain age or people who are into a certain style of thing and I don't want that for my music or art at all you Mm -hmm. know I just want it to be useful to whoever uh, comes across it and thinks that you know something that they can they can use but I feel like music is good that way what you're feeling inside can go into love songs I feel like the aspect of doing art for me I remember thinking when I first started you know drawing portraits of people one of the reasons it's not the reason I stopped but one of the reasons I started slowing down and again you know like I kind of write obsessively in journals and things like that so you know go back and kind of like read stuff and it's sort of like I would I remember I I found another thing I was just going through a bunch of stuff I had a (laughs) My studio got broken into. Oh, and my I saw laptop. that. Yeah. Oh my god, I saw oh, that yeah. on Instagram. I my heart yeah. is broken for you. It's all good. It I actually mean, is. Listen, <laughs> I mean, yeah. they took. Tell, tell me, remind me, they took like all of your hard drives. They took my like, laptop. They took fifteen hard drives that were basically you know work from the last about fifteen or sixteen years. I mean, so they're demos on there. They're uh, like. Um, Mostly it's stuff that, I I mean, what I've come to now is just, you know, anything I don't really remember being on there. And there are some things that I do that are kind of like, you know, like you shoot something for a movie and you still have all the raw footage, but then you think like, okay, but that thing's finished. The finished product is somewhere in the world and I can, you know, get it back in a certain way. But yeah, there's, you know, demos and sketches and all that stuff gets you know. I, I, your yeah. attitude about it, because when yeah. I saw that Instagram post and you were like, listen, everyone I love is fine. Everything's yeah, like, it's going to be okay. good. And that's exactly how we should, we should approach challenges in our life. It's like, hard, though. like it's happened. It's done. Being mad about it is not going to change it. But no. still, I mean, I'm just going to be really mad for you. Okay, that's <laughs> because fine. Because yeah. I'm like... Oh. I, mean, it's all, I mean, I learned my lesson. Like, whatever, the security there is like double and triple there now. Mm. Because I just never, you know... You never yeah, really you never think, think that. Yeah, yeah, you think that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but as a result of that, you know, when I was looking for, I was like, did this person leave any trace of what they did? It was, I mean, to their credit, it was an immaculate robbery. Oh <laughs> they just took that stuff. What and it, I mean, I'm hoping yeah. like they'll, obviously it's, it's some, useless to anyone it's, else. I mean, it's, and, and obviously it was targeted because you wouldn't break into somebody's random house and steal hard drives. Like, right. And like, I do, like, it's our garage. So I will be in there working sometimes with the doors open because it gets crazy hot and mm-hmm, i've got the mm-hmm. fan you know and it's like in front of the house people walk by and oh yeah see, so like, everyone can see in there. what's he doing what's yeah guy yeah doing? i mean just on that you know while i was looking around that stuff like found a bunch of you know i've got like sketchbooks and journals laying around it was just flipping through stuff i remember both thinking and then seeing i've written it down that i would like to draw a portrait of everyone i've ever come across and i used to when i used to walk through times square i would get a little overwhelmed you know because i would just keep looking at faces mm. and keep thinking like I gotta remember that person's face oh, I do wow, this. Wow. but it was just instantly a thing it was especially in that mode where I was just making art mm-hmm. it was just really this thing and then you know I started doing portraits of friends or just like you know whoever would sit for one like a sketch and I remember thinking just like it's hard for me to do portraits because a part of me starts to fall in love with this mm. person that I'm looking at for so long. You yeah, know, and it's yeah, kind of yeah. this thing of just, you see their face, you see, you know, the mm-hmm. beauty, you see them yes, sitting, you see yes. tiny details, you know? And so that for me, like making portraits is completely rooted in love and just kind of that you have a connection with a person and just beyond it was something I didn't really think about. But, you know, you go to a museum and see sketches of people that were made hundreds of years ago. And, you know, that person and everything around them, that their environment is completely gone. But here you're standing in front of a face that was rendered with a lot of care. You're getting a feeling from this face Mm -hmm. that like the person who did this was clearly 
in love with the person they were looking at, whether it was like just like a filial love, a fraternal love, or yeah, you know, like there was love romantic there. love. Yeah, you know, yeah. there was love there, and you can see it, and you're looking in the eyes of this person, and you think like whoever made this was standing this close to this image, as close as I am, you know. So mm-hmm. there's something coming off of there that yes. travels, you know, it's beyond space and time it's... and life, and you know. Yeah. So that for me is really rooted so in that beautiful yeah and even anything coming just from your imagination it's i just love that i'm given the opportunity you know to work that way and just kind of transform anything that i'm seeing or feeling into an object or a song or something like that because it's it's definitely all a reflection of love even if it's the absence or the the perceived absence of love yeah it's all tied together yeah that way you know? yeah yeah I love that so much. And I feel the same way about, and I actually used to play this game with myself in New York where I, it's funny because I'm not an artist. You don't know, no one wants me to, well. It's not true. I mean, it's not not true, but go on. Well, thanks. It's funny. I actually took, I actually took a drawing class a few years ago because I was like, I just want to learn how to draw. I can't believe I never learned how to draw. My brother was like a very prolific artist and we were Mm -hmm. growing up and I think he, everybody was like, he was the talented one. Oh yeah. And so I felt like I wasn't. And so I didn't ever even try, but I do this thing on the subway where I just look at every single person Mm -hmm. and I look to find something attractive about every single person. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you can, if you're looking for the good, if you're looking for the beauty in another person, like you will always be able to find it. Absolutely. And the world would be such a better place if we all all took the time to do that just a little bit more just yeah. you know you give someone your attention like that actually even this morning so um you know the the park echo lake park mm-hmm. you know just a few blocks um, down the street here and i go there almost every day mm-hmm. and um i went there this morning mm-hmm. and there is this homeless woman who's there all the time mm-hmm. and she's you know sometimes she's in a good mood and she's chatty and sometimes mm-hmm. she's not and sure. I totally understand and but actually but this morning when i saw her i was like you know good morning and she said hey and yeah. her face like lit up in this huge smile like yeah. you know i just see how beautiful she is totally. you know and i'm just like oh god i just see a parallel you know universe where her life is just so different you know yeah, yeah. um and i'm like man you really because it's funny because i was thinking this this morning when i saw her and just like this amazing you know bright spirit and the mm-hmm. smile on her face and i'm just like wow like there's so many people who would never even look at yeah, her because no, you know she's dirty and she's you know yeah, yeah, of ranting sometimes I'm and all sure, those things yeah. and we're all really amazing if you pay attention yeah <laughs> and it's bare you know like very understandable mental barriers to that but it you, yeah like you said it would be nice if that was you know ground floor or learning as a child you know you just give everyone some attention yeah. you know because that's the other thing too you know you're talking about someone who's like you know homeless or transient or something like that it's everybody just really wants someone to listen to them mm-hmm. in those situations and acknowledge like even beyond the whole like the can you help me out is you know like since it's the kind of world we live in of course people are thinking about money but like, can you help me out is do you see me yeah you know yeah can you, like, you go say hello um, and yeah. look me in the eye and yeah, yeah. because mm-hmm. that's you know I mean, it's an understatement. It's a hard thing yeah. to kind of go through life and then, you know, get it in your head that nobody really sees you mm-hmm. or wants to, mm-hmm. you know. it's Yeah, it's a, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I really like looking at people and just like, even, you know, the, the weird thing is I've met some people who we just could not be more different, you know. And on tour, you know, I've met people who are definitely, you know, not in our audience or anything, Definitely racist, <laughs> definitely sexist, definitely mm-hmm. homophobic, definitely I can just only imagine. Race. Oh yeah, <laughs> but then you know it's kind of the the weird the weird thing, and this is like a sweeping. This is a very open way to look at it, but everybody's coming from somewhere, you know. And I feel like the more defensive someone is about something, or the more sort of like you know, like anyone who's sort of just like the, the whole like we will not be replaced thing. Of, whatever like, racist or yeah, da, like, da, 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 da. like Trump supporters who don't want immigrants because they're something like it's that it's just yeah. this sort of <laughs> thing too where nonsense. it's like <laughs> there's all sorts of nonsense but what I was going to say is you know if there are five of those guys I'm just like all right I'm not if you got people feeding your mentality mm-hmm. of just like look that person's different let's just mess with them mm-hmm. it's like that you know it's like 
usually one-on-one someone has and i'm definitely not every situation i'm just saying i've been in situations where suddenly you're talking to someone and you're just kind of like we're cool man it's not like you know we we, since we started a conversation and i just don't my problem and it will probably be the end of me someday is that i usually think someone's joking when they're that much of an (laughs) asshole where i'm just like it still happens like in a lot of situations where i'm like you can't possibly be like serious about this and maybe that's what leads me in a conversation with someone where i'm like oh you gotta tell me more about that yeah, you know like because yeah. i don't are you kidding and then when i realize they're not i'm just yeah, kind of like all right not. i get it but you know i know i feel the same way actually somewhere you know? yeah i'm more fascinated by people who are really hateful than yeah. i am upset by them at this point because i'm just like wow like what must your inner world be like yeah, like, like what happened to you like what's the ex- like it must not be a pleasant place inside of there like, it's just a lot to hold on to it's you so know? much to hold on to like just yeah it's all yeah and it's you know incurable in some people but it really is you know like when you start just thinking you're like i'm always just like well what happened to you what was the thing that happened to you and the thing that happened to some people might just be like you had a parent who was also in that place of having some reason to cast somebody as other to make themselves feel Feel better better. Mm -hmm. you know that's Mm -hmm. the and then you're kind of just like well feel better about what and when you keep when you start tracing that back you know it's it can go pretty deep but everyone's coming from somewhere that being said i have no problem pushing nazis down manholes (laughs) (laughs) i did not expect you to say that there's a certain point after which you're kind of like, I get it, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you're totally... I have, I, have, I have a modicum of sympathy for everybody, but right, some people right. are a little beyond help. Well, you need a, a zen slap in the back of the head. You certainly don't need to engage with everyone. That's for, yeah, that's for exactly. Sure. Well, you know, talking about being seen and... As a performer, how vulnerable does that feel to be so seen, to be so visible, to express these deep emotions through your art and have people come to it with their own experiences and judgments and perspectives and mm. you become like this, I don't know, like a like a lens or a filter for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I mean, is, does that feel scary to you? Are you used to it at this point because you've been creating for so long? I don't, I guess I don't think about it that much. I feel like on stage, well, it's two things i remember we were one of the first shows the band played outside of the country we were opening for blonde redhead you know this band blonde redhead i don't they're a great band it's two uh there's twin brothers named amadeo oh, and simone that does, you know what that does sound familiar yeah where are they from and they're from well new york oh okay based, yeah. yeah and okay. the another uh, the other it's um simone Sings, I might be getting that wrong. Kazu Makino is the other singer. Mm-hmm. And their songs are very, very emotional. Very, you know, very heavy. To me, like on, you know, first listens, when I first found out about them, it was just, they just sound like the deepest, deepest heartbreak. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, and I know the, like, the history of the band. There have been, like, oh. tumultuous relationships. So yeah. what I was thinking when we were going to open them, I was just like, oh, this is the first time I'm going to see them live. Like, mm-hmm. how can they go to that place every night? Like, mm-hmm. that just seems like it would be torture to do that over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And when I saw them, the first thing I noticed was just like, oh, they're kind of... It's it not, and I don't mean like overly theatrical, mm-hmm. but there's a theater to what they were doing where you're presenting the model of these feelings that you had. Mm. But even though the seed of that might be the original feeling through the repetition of those songs, mm-hmm. it kind of gets away from you. And yeah, you there's can like a catharsis that takes yeah, place. And it's, exactly. Yeah, and you yeah. can, you start to appreciate it in a different way mm-hmm. and you can communicate an emotion without being wrapped up in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I've definitely watched people, and you know, watch people, you know, like break down on stage because they're you know in it and that's a beautiful thing and makes sense but that can be really tough yeah you know that can really put some people in a bad place you know so for me it's kind of in the performance i feel like i react emotionally i'm in a different place emotionally when i'm singing something that I wrote out of a lot of despair. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of respect it after doing it for a while. 
he's sort of like, well, I'm glad I had those feelings, even if they were negative, because I could turn them into something, you know what I mean, spiritual in any sort of specific way, Mm -hmm. but into something that you can gift to the spirit that you can share with somebody else and they can use it for something, you know, like you write a song and you're like, that got me out of a place. And I've been fortunate enough to have people say like, oh, that song helped me through a really hard time. And I think, well, that's what it's for. Mm Helped me through a really hard time too. So I'm glad that that happened. But as far as being seen and... I don't know. I feel like there was a period of time where I did think about it a lot and it just wasn't productive. Yes. You know, it was, it was actually really, and I still go back there sometimes where I, I remember the first, it must have been the first four records I made. Like everyone would just be like, so you guys finished a record. Are you really, are you anxious about what, how it might be received? And I was just like, by who? Like, what do you mean? Like, what is there to be anxious about? I was like, I don't care. I don't know. And then it was, we took a long break and we came back and people were just like, oh, are you anxious about it? And I was kind of like, Actually, I sort of am, because after a long break... You came back with Seeds. Yeah. Which is such an amazing album. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks a lot. But that was, you know, the the end of our tour, and I guess it was the... We put out Nine Types of Light in 2011. During 2012, we were done with that, and that's when the long break happened, you know, and like we were, you know, it was kind of... I was also sort of just like, yeah, we had a a rough time. We had to put the band stuff down for a while and everyone's got to kind of go and... uh, Yeah, that's a whole other relationship. Refresh. Like complicated relationships. You want to talk about love relationships. That's like, I mean... I can only imagine. And everyone, everyone (laughs) is always just like, oh yeah, a band's like a marriage, except you're married to like, you know, four people and you got to wake up with them all the time. And (laughs) I was like, yeah, originally I was just kind of like, no, it's not like a marriage. And I was just like, oh no, it's like a difficult marriage. (laughs) it's a very difficult marriage where you really love each other but you're you know to quote someone some days you're somewhere and you're like man i can't even watch him drink water anymore without getting just (laughs) pissed (laughs) that i have to yeah but you know it's like when everyone had a break to kind of figure stuff out that's when i started i got just back into more art making and uh I had another kind of small band that was just, it was just refreshing in a way to make music that I knew wouldn't be immediately under some Scooping. kind of lens or there yeah. wouldn't be like expectations for it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I started I start a band with friends called Higgins Waterproof. Oh, yeah, Black Magic yeah. Band. Yeah, <laughs> and we just made an EP and it was just fun. It yeah. was like friends that I wanted to play with for a while. But it wasn't this big thing, you know, and uh, I feel like during that break, our manager started calling and saying like she was our tour manager before you know she just called me up and she said you know she also tour managed a bunch of other bands and became manager for other bands she said you know i've been going out on the road with other bands and just talking to people and they ask about you guys and you guys are really really well respected and i was kind of like yeah that's nice and she's like no 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 you don't understand like <laughs> People who you really, who you really admire, are telling me that you, you, how important you are to them, and oh, I sort of like that's cool. That's you know, amazing. I really think of, no, it's so nice to God. hear, <laughs> but it's not something you think about. You know, yeah. it's not something I think about that much. But mm-hmm. when we were making the new record, then I was suddenly like, oh, I've been away from this long enough, and when I mention to someone we're writing again, or when someone hears we're writing again, it's just such a like. <gasps> That for the first time I was kind of like, yeah, I don't. mm, It's a lot of mm." pressure. It feels like it. I Mm -hmm. mean, truthfully, it shouldn't be. Yeah. Because you're just gonna make what you're gonna make, and it's gonna go where it's gonna go, and it's not. It's absolutely not the end of the world. Yeah. If it doesn't get the sort of attention that it used to, or you know, Mm -hmm. you. uh, I think the thing is just not to have any strong expectations beyond the expectation that I'll finish the work and get it out. And then be able to go on to the next thing. Yeah. And that's your job. That's the only thing you can do. Yeah, it's the most productive way to, <laughs> yeah, you don't to have... look at it for me. Yeah. Because... No control over how other people are going to receive anything. And reviews are sort yeah. of like it's one person's opinion. I remember I was reading a review of, um, I was looking for a movie to take my, my kid to. And I was just, you know, I'm going through the reviews just to be like, what's this about? What's this about? Yeah. And then I went <laughs> on a review for the Ugly Dolls movie. Oh, uh-huh. Well reviewed, I think. I, I mean, this guy was not really into it, okay. or this, this whoever it was was not was not into it. Mm-hmm. And I was halfway through the review, and they were really picking at this thing. And I mm. suddenly thought, like, do I care about what someone over the age of twelve thinks about <laughs> the Ugly, Ugly Dolls movie? movie? I was just like, man, you're like a forty two year old man sitting in a theater, probably with a bunch of seven year olds going, just like, oh my gosh, the mise en scene, and this, this is just horrible. <laughs> I thought Ice Bat's character was super underdeveloped. 
<laughs> you know, so it's like reviews are the same way. I feel yeah, like especially certain music websites mm-hmm. that I won't mention, you, you see people who are writing just to hear or see themselves write. Mm-hmm. You know, they got to mm-hmm. get something out of it. And so mm-hmm. they're throwing it down and, you know, like numbers and all of that. It is a little bit kind of lucky that the way the band got noticed or just, I, I mean, I feel this and I maybe I'm just wrong and people are cooler about it than I think. Like I can go to a deli, you know, <laughs> like I'm like... <laughs> I'm cool. I can go to Delhi. I can walk. I can get right. on the subway. Right, it's right. Like, you, you know, can live, you during can times live. where records had just come out in Brooklyn, I mm-hmm. remember there was a period of time where like I couldn't go to like you know a friend's coffee shop and sit mm. there and draw or write uh, or you know, yeah. that. and, that, and that just you know because no one's looking at you and you're sketching people if they don't know who you are, mm-hmm. and then it would just be like I'd be somewhere drawing or writing and someone would just be stick like <laughs> just like hard eyeballs from across the room and I look down and, and I'd just like, be like and I'd always be oh, like so awkward. What are they looking at yeah yeah and they come over and just be like i'm just i just want to tell you i'm such a big fan of that da, da, da. like, oh that's really cool I'm just like what do you do when you draw and I'm oh just like, man no, not for you man <laughs> not, well, i'm not trying oh outside gosh. anymore okay i have to tell you the story that i wasn't going to tell you but i have to tell you okay so i ran into you once i saw you once on the street in brooklyn uh-huh. and this was i don't know maybe like six seven years ago or something uh-huh. like that it was late i was it was like probably like two o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. in williamsburg i was heading home and you probably were too and we were like the only two people on the street uh-huh. and as like we were so we were walking towards each other and when you got close enough I realized I recognized you uh-huh. and I just had this like very knee-jerk reaction of like <gasps> Like uh-huh. I got excited, I went like, I, and I literally like went like, <gasps> like gasped uh-huh. and like, looked at you with this very excited face, and uh-huh. you just went, and you just put your head down and kept on walking. Oh, I'm sorry. No, please don't yeah. apologize. Because yeah. even in that moment, I was like, oh yeah, he doesn't need this right now. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm sure it was to- totally fine, but I, I mean, I also, <laughs> I also might have been walking at two in the morning. And saw you do that and thought just like, oh, this young woman is horrified of me because we're the only two people on the street. Oh, so maybe no. let me just do my, oh, let me my just goodness. like, you know, oh, no, no. avert myself <laughs> as to not freak this person out, you know, even more. Um, yeah, I think, I, yeah, I, I, it was just what I definitely like, I was like, fair enough. Yes, he should oh, not. It's cool. If I had, if I hadn't been so surprised to see you, I would have played uh-huh. it much cooler. Okay. And then <laughs> But also that being said, like everybody who's come, I was telling somebody this yesterday, I was talking to a friend who's a musician and we were just talking about what the same thing we were just talking about, you know, putting something out and not knowing who it's going to find and come back. And I really can count on coming to me immediately. I can count on three hands, three fingers on one hand, the number of people who've come up to me who've been really unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Not unpleasant, but just, you know, like kind of fanny about like, yeah. you know, excessive, just a weird sort of just like, oh my God, let me get a selfie with you, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't believe it. I can't just like yeah. keep talking. But everyone else, it's a really beautiful thing because just the appreciation, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of like my whatever, whatever reference is dated but it's i feel like with influencers especially when i see instagram you know there can be a bunch of things where it's just like oh it's like i got my picture with this person or just like yeah, i'm here with this person yeah. and there's no real reason for it it's well, just reason or a, connection that yeah, happened yeah. but i feel very fortunate that most people who have you know approached me are super respectful about it and also have something to say about how the music affected their life Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. which is great which is the most you could ask for yeah definitely so i feel really fortunate about that and just like the being seen thing is i feel like everyone's really cool about it but it does put you in this odd place now where you realize okay i have a venue for whatever work i'm going to do and Mm -hmm. people are going to be interested and i feel like especially because i do different things and want to do more different things i can't really ever think about pleasing everybody yeah or anybody you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or expect that everyone get something or is really into it and which is fine because everything they were into still exists (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah well also you can never put anything out into the world if you became paralyzed with some worry about how people who you have no control over i mean i i talk about this all the time in the context of dating it's like you've got your own mind to worry about and to try to figure out what's going on with your own thoughts like rather than create a whole story about how other people are perceiving you and have this yeah. it be this like paralyzing thing is completely, completely counterproductive. Like, you oh, know, yeah. you're, you're not a mind reader, um, nor should you be. But I think that like, you mean talking to you, one thing that's so striking to me is you are so good at perspective. Oh yeah. Of like just being able to put things in perspective and, and even, you know, 
your approach to creativity and being creative it's such a gift to you personally Mm -hmm. and it's a gift to the world but it's also it's a gift to you personally in the sense that you are able to create some distance in your own mind between like an uncomfortable experience or emotion and like your reality oh yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) Like you, you have to. You have to. Otherwise, you'll be. I mean, that's. I mean, honestly, it's like people who can't ever create any kind of space between those it's emotions hard. and their experience of reality. They're really, really unhappy people. It's a hard way to deal. It's a lot yeah. to carry around. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so awesome that for you, like creativity is the avenue through which you're able to create that space. If that makes sense. Yeah. No. Of course. <laughs> you just want to get it. I mean, it goes back to that. You know, I don't want to be the person who's always whining about a breakup to somebody you know it's sort of like that's not great you have to you know make a whatever feeling it is you know like again like make a model of it or make a you know paint a picture of it so you could just be like that's all there now and I respect that and I respect the feeling that I have I get to keep the even if it's a a negative feeling I don't know if best is the way to use word for it but you know you keep the the most important parts of those feelings or the parts of those feelings that you learn something from or just were privileged enough to you know because I've had you know I feel like everyone at some point has a great love you know even if it doesn't manifest in the way it wants they want it to and the experience with another person they have the first time that they were just completely obsessed with someone Mm -hmm. like obsessed you know like couldn't (laughs) stop thinking about them couldn't like da 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 Um, whether that affection was returned or not Mm -hmm. Um, it was not in my case I mean me either (laughs) yeah but you know what like the fact that I felt that way and realized I could feel that way and then feel something just as intensely when I realized it was not going to happen Mm -hmm. now I see that it's such a gift you know it's such a gift that you see like oh I can go up that high I can come down this low and ultimately you know despite all of my like you know elation or like wound licking afterwards it's fine you know you're fine eventually (laughs) yeah and then you you isn't it amazing (laughs) oh yeah because there's so many times where you're just like (laughs) this is it this this is the end I can't actually it I can't cross the bridge I'm not gonna get on the other side (laughs) (laughs) exactly I got the exact point on the Dumbo Bridge where I'm going to jump. Yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be it, you know? It's, and, it's incredible. But, yeah. That's why you need that perspective. Oh, absolutely. You are yeah. a Zen master. I want I you... I am so not. I... <laughs> at all. No, I definitely lose it sometimes. I'm just like... Well, that's because you're human, spot. but you bring it back to the, you know, to this place that... Somebody yeah. broke into your studio and stole 15 years of your work. And you're like right, able to it's... not to rub salt in the wound. I mean, I just got other stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know. That's what I, mean, I feel like that's what, you know, maybe that's perspective. That or is that's, perspective. Or that's, that's exactly, going, you know, yeah. or going back to a point in your life. You know, there was, if I, if that had happened even six years ago, mm-hmm. I would not be here talking to you right now. I would still be like, you know, yeah, just on the phone with the cosmo. Like, you got to find this dude. You got to find <laughs> yeah. right now. It's my work stuff and I'm like yeah. I don't know whoever I hope they get whatever they need out of that even if it's money you know because I you know that's what I always think about this person jumped over a fence yeah. was in a yard long enough to open a lock went into a room they don't know anything about you know yeah. it's like I feel like and I could be wrong but like I'd have to be in a pretty desperate place to do that you'd have to you be know, in a very desperate place to do that to do something yeah. where I'm like I'm gonna bust this lock open not knowing if there's someone with a shotgun behind the door <laughs> Or could yeah. just dispatch me with no problem, mm-hmm. you know? So it's kind of, I don't know, it sucks. But at the same time, it's like, I hope that whatever a person gets out of that yeah. is great. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of very bad unfinished songs on all those hard drives. <laughs> so if you can finish them and make them something, go for it. Oh, man. It's all you. Oh, man. It's all you now. Maybe let us, like, polish everything up and send it back to you. Yeah, Hopefully, exactly. anonymously, it'll yeah. just all pop back yeah, up, you know? exactly. Or something. Yeah. If, if, the, if the person who stole Tune Day shit is listening to is this, listening. Yeah. just return it. It has no value to you. It has so much value to Tune Day and to the world. Like, just... It would actually be great if someone was just, like, found all that stuff and was like, oh, man, this looks like somebody's stuff, <laughs> Who do I know who can do something with stuff? <laughs> my cousin Timbaland isn't really talking to me anymore, but I could drop something off for him and just, just leave it on his doorstep and he can do something with this. Oh my god. I'm like, yeah, give it to Timbaland. Yeah, give, give it to, to Tim- give it, it to Timbaland yeah. or return it to Tune Day, please. It. Send it, get it to Pharrell, Frank Ocean. If they can figure right. out something, you know, then it's all good. Then we're 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 good. 
No grudges. Oh, man. Well, I have one final question for you. Okay. It is on the same topic of perspective. And now since you basically have just written a book, like a life oh, advice, d- no, love I- advice <laughs> book. You have. <laughs> Maybe that's part A, but part B will just be like all of the down and outs, very, very stupid things that oh. I've done in relationships. Well, that's why you're wise. I don't know about that. I think it's just, maybe wisdom is just being like, eh, that wasn't the best move. <laughs> and I don't, and now that I've cleaned it up, I know like, yeah, yeah. I don't ever want to, yeah. I don't ever want to do that to myself or anyone else. Yeah. But again. see, if more people could do that, most most people don't, they're, yeah. they're so busy, stuck in a, someone did something to me or oh, someone yeah. made me do this or made me feel this way that yeah. they don't ever have the perspective to say like, okay, wait, what did I do here? And how can oh, yeah. I do this differently in the future? Yeah. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And I think it's, it's just worth noting. I mean, I definitely know people who A, never think they're wrong. B, never think they did anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> C, won't acknowledge when they did do something wrong. Yep. And D, like to act like nothing happened yep. after something they did something wrong. Mm-hmm. And all of those things will at one, I don't care who you are, one point f- form the Voltron of what's going to take you out. Because you can't <laughs> go through the world like that. You cannot. You really can't. You because you, you no. end up, you after you burn out everyone who now knows that about you, mm-hmm. you end up in a pretty lonely place yeah you know? yeah it's sad yeah, yeah. And, and word gets around whether you like it or not mm-hmm. yeah it's, i know it's so true well i mean i think that's a really great book into your book but um... <laughs> the title of the book is word gets around word gets around, word gets around. so be nice watch yourself <laughs> <laughs> control your control your stuff where it gets around so if you had like a bullhorn and mm-hmm. you could tell send the whole world one message about love or connection what would it be you kind of well. do actually but you, you're like i've already told the world no. so many things no i mean but none of that's like i don't know if any of that's advice <laughs> i don't know i guess it's that nothing is really well i don't know i don't know i feel like i have a couple of i would probably have a list but I feel like generally <laughs> a try not to hurt yourself or anybody else i feel like is a good general rule nice. you know to go through life with and then whatever steps you can take to not do those things is probably you know like if you realize you're like is this gonna hurt me or someone else maybe there's another way i could do this where it's more more generative than destructive Mm -hmm. but also just you know take it's very hard to love yourself I think it can be really, really, really difficult. But like, you should know that at the bottom of it, you're worthy and it's cool. It's fine to like, you know, and if you don't want to put in terms of like, I love myself because that seems like, you know, an egocentric thing, you just be like, yo, know, it's you got there are many things going for you as far as your personality that like you should appreciate because then A, someone else can appreciate them, and B, if you're not finding the person who appreciates them, you don't need to, you yeah. know, that much. Yeah. You know, or you you will if you keep that solid if under the banner of don't hurt yourself or anyone else, if you're just kind of like, Yeah, and I gotta this is my mind and my body and I have to live in here for the how, however long I've been allotted. So just try not to make it a, a, too much of a grind for yourself and that's hard to do too yeah. that can be hard it can be really hard and then people. appreciate too when you know when nothing's wrong and you can connect with somebody mm-hmm. yeah I think that that might be it that's beautiful yeah. I mean I got like a little emotional there oh, you said that. that's awesome yeah I think if you're yeah I think, I think if you're on some level cool with yourself and, yeah. your, and your flaws too mm-hmm. you know yeah, then well, you're... there is no perfection, right? And that's oh. what makes us, we're all perfectly imperfect. And yeah. I always try to remind myself when I'm feeling, you know, when I'm struggling with that feeling of worthiness and self-love, and I think that's mm-hmm. just being human until oh, you're yeah. like a super enlightened, um, you know. <laughs> I think maybe part of being a super enlightened person is coming down to the fact too of just like, oh, right, and I'm just human. Well, yeah, <laughs> and know? yeah, and being human, it's like we're all worthy of love. We're all yeah, worthy. definitely. So oh. for me to think that I'm the exception is oh, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. more egotistical. <laughs> oh, completely. Than just saying, no, I'm actually worthy of love yeah. and respect. I mean, everyone else is too, yeah. but I'm also... But you are too. Me, yeah. I, I am too. If you too. can love and yeah. respect someone else, then like you, you are, then someone else will love and respect you. And that's the other thing. Yeah, you, you totally hit it on the head. It's like, even though you're special, the experiences that you're going through with love or dating or just generally in life, it's like, 
it's happened before, you know, Mm -hmm. it's definitely part of being human. And I feel like, again, it's a hard thing to do. But if the perspective is just like, you know, everyone's going through something, absolutely, everyone's going through something. And the fact that I can crack open actually the song Love Dog. Oh my god, I was just, um, I was like, I have to mention Love Dog really quick before we end this. I love that's probably literally one of my top 10 favorite songs of all time. I love that song so yeah. much but okay saying what's like oh no it's love based dog. on a it's this based so um yeah <laughs> it's based on um a, a roomy poem that do you know Rumi? Yeah, you know Rumi? I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I do. always, I, I yeah. don't know, I don't know who knows who. <laughs> don't remember if the title of the poem was Love Dog. I think the essence of it was, and I'm totally like paraphrasing and butchering it, is that there was a, a man in the desert who was kept praying to God to reveal him or itself, you know, to him and didn't hear anything back and kept doing it and didn't hear anything back and became full of despair and full of longing when God finally made itself and revealed itself to this person. The man was almost almost exhausted and said you know like why didn't you why didn't you answer me am i like an unfaithful servant why didn't you answer me and the god said your longing is the answer mm. you know and the longing that you felt is the you know is what what should fill you cup should fill your cup and it, and then it said something like there are love dogs who would give their life to have their cup filled like that and you should be glad to be one of them where it's like the, just the act of you know like and this is what you said you know like the act of longing or feeling a year yearning for connection because I feel like ultimately the love connection is you're trying to you're trying to gain access to something that's larger than yourself you know you want to be a part of something so that you know but even the yearning and striving for that is a great feeling to have in you yeah you know yeah because Sometimes you're a co- you, yeah. co-creator of it so you have oh, to totally. it has to come from within yeah. you and yeah. join together with other people yeah. oh my god tune day this i am just that's really beautiful i'm buying your book <laughs> okay great my book is out right now go to amazon it's called word will get around oh my be goodness. nice yeah so tell just tell the listeners if there's anything that you're working on right now that you want people to check out how can they i know i'm just writing right now yeah just doing songs right now the band is sort of we've been writing for a while but like we're always writing so i don't know exactly what's gonna happen with that but yeah i have a project called warm weather ghost which is um i'm soundtracking live movie I made like a one hour visual I made I got commissioned by a museum a few years ago to do it and I performed it initially with six other musicians but now I'm figuring out a way to do it like a more theatrical thing where I'm in a costume and narrating it and you know just kind of and it's about death and the transmigration of the soul so that I will probably I'm going to try to do some performance of that later in the year probably in Los Angeles oh my god I can't wait um, I will be there <laughs> yeah but that's about it I'm working on a comic that's going to come out in December which I only kind of know what's about right now but that's about it but you know that's, that, like, that's all well no I mean it's, that's, that's kind of it but you know I've decided to try to use the, the Instagram the social media just to tell people about that stuff and as little else as possible because yeah. it's just too much yeah well everyone should follow you and i'll definitely link to your instagram okay and also all of my favorite tv on the radio songs at least oh, that's I'll, nice. I'll try to i'll limit it to maybe like my top 10 <laughs> and there you have it my conversation with tune day i hope that you enjoyed it as much as i did and if you do like what you hear please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it and if you feel so moved to rate and review us then i'd be really grateful for that as well so don't be shy and be sure to check the show notes for links to tune day social media and also for a link to the playlist that i created of my very favorite tv on the radio songs thank you so much for listening you can stay in touch with me on all social media at Dear Franny and you can follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Dear Franny Podcast. So thank you so much wherever in the world you are. Thank you for listening. Your time is precious and thank you for spending a bit of it with me. Take care.